communicating increasingly with our colleagues around the world. Uh, we have partners in Latin America studying child development, in Singapore studying child development. We have partners in Europe and, and Korea and India looking at Alzheimer's disease. Our colleagues in Germany, uh, they took one brain from uh, somebody who donated uh, her brain and they took that brain and they sliced it, just like a, a deli slicer, 7,400 times 20 microns thick. And when I say 20 microns, that's, that's thinner than a human hair. And then we had the task of using computational techniques to realign and correct all of the distortions such that we could put all those slices back together again in a coherent three-dimensional brain. So, I, uh, I'm going to give you just a brief introduction to uh, the, the history of the big brain. I'm not going to say too much about what we're doing right now because a lot of that will be presented by uh, various people through the uh, course of the day. Um, it, is a, it is a pleasure to... Can I, to can I speak closer to the mic? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the big brain, uh, the origins of the big brain, we, we started at the MNI uh, <laughs> 30 years ago, uh, developing atlases with MRI of various forms. And if you want to read more about uh, brain atlases and templates, you can go to this review article. The problem is that they're, in three they're with MRI. So they're three-dimensional, which is great, but they're at one millimeter resolution. The other end of the universe, we have atlases of uh, small portions of brain, which are uh, based on histology, um, myeloarchitectural maps of small parts of brain, either slices or three-dimensional blocks in a small piece of brain. So neither of those are ideal. We would like to have a three-dimensional histology map at one micron resolution. And that's, uh, at this moment, beyond our reach. Not too far, but it's beyond our reach at the moment. The compromise that uh, has been arrived at so far is the big brain. And the big brain was published uh, in 2013 in Science. This was a collaboration between uh, the Ulish Research Center, Katrin Amundsen and her team, and uh, my team here, with the continued uh, involvement of uh, Professor Carl Zillis and his team. And uh, you'll be hearing more from Carl shortly. So the big brain represents a, a compromise between those two extremes of histology and in vivo 3D imaging. Katrin's uh, team at uh, the Ulish uh, Research Center did the wet work, if you like. They did the uh, sectioning in a single post-mortem 65-year-old brain into 7,404 sections. The data was digitized and then sent to my lab. Um, and this started almost, at this point, almost 10 years ago. And uh, uh, my lab, particularly uh, Claude Lepage and Lindsay Lewis, did the, the work of integrating all of those 7,000 sections into a coherent three-dimensional whole. The data set has been downloaded at this point uh, over 25,000 times. So we placed it in the public domain and it has become a, a, a global standard. The good news is that there are lots of people using it. For us, the bad news is that we don't know what they're doing with it, which is why we're having a workshop here to find out what you're all up to. I think that's a good example of, uh, of the, the pros and cons of, uh, of open science.
This is the, uh, the, the kinds of uh, individual slice data that we were faced with at the outset of this project. Almost all of the slices had some problem or another, whether it's uh, gross rips and tears or geometric distortions or optical imbalance. And that's put a lot of, work, uh, a lot of effort to uh, realign, reconstruct, and, and, and establish the optical balancing. Again, you'll hear more about this from the various people in, in the presentations. So the net result uh, was this, and again, to make the point, the, the, on the left, you have a comparison of the, an MRI volume at one millimeter, and in the bottom left, you can see, uh, I zoom in to that, uh, that image, and of course, that's at two millimeters across that box, and each, each of one of those pixels is 0.5 of, of a millimeter, so that's already higher MRI resolution than we're used to seeing. On the right, you see the same zoom for the big brain, and of course you can see uh, almost uh, cellular resolution on the right, so that gives you an idea of how we can go from whole brain to, uh, to uh, individual uh, almost cellular resolution. If you extract the surfaces, this is what you look, and this is what you obtain. This on the, on the left-hand side you see the real surface, and on the right you see the inner and outer cortical mantles, surfaces of the cortical, cortical mantle. Uh, with uh, Louis Bourgeon and his team at the National Research Center in Ottawa, uh, we developed uh, the Atelier 3D visualization tool, which allows us to explore this data set. Bear in mind that this data set is the equivalent of uh, 125,000 MRI volumes. For those of you who, who wonder about that, this is a 20 micron volumetric data set. If you compare that to Im uh, MRI imaging at one millimeter volumetric, that's a thousand microns in each dimension. You go down by 50, a factor of 50 in each dimension. So 50 times 50 times 50 is 125,000. So this data set is the equivalent in size to approximately 125 ADNIs. For those of you who know what the ADNI database is. We place the data set onto the web for, for download uh, using the, the, uh, the LORIS tool and this, uh, this in, uh, interface. And as I said, it's been downloaded so far by uh, more than 25,000 groups. We've had two releases. The original release in, uh, in 2013 after the science paper was followed up in 2015 with release 2.0 where we imp improved upon uh, a number of uh, issues related to linear registration and uh, the optical imbalance. And this data was uh, also uh, aligned in MNI space and made available to the community. We've provided it in at different levels from 100, 200, 300, and 400 micron resolution in native and MNI space coordinates with tissue cl classification information, cortical surfaces, and uh, documentation to describe what's been provided. A brief comparison, this is the 1.0 and you see the optical striations and 2.0, those, those have essentially been removed. This again is the Atelier 3D visualization tool and here uh, this shows us uh, we can uh, provide oblique slice planing through this, uh, this volume. And for many people in the audience are particularly interested in the hippocampus, so you can see that we're uh, aligning this uh, oblique slice along the long axis of the hippocampus. And if I zoom in, that's again along the long axis of the hippocampus. We'll, I guess, hear more from many people about the hippocampus, Roseanne, right? <laughs> um, there's now a proliferation of visualization tools which are being used to uh, uh, examine the big brain. Uh, Atelier 3 day that I've talked about, uh, NeuroGlancer, which you're familiar with, and the BOSS is a spatial database in the cloud that serves big brain. And so now people can uh, explore this, uh, this uh, one terabyte approximately database uh, through the web using, uh, using the BOSS and Greg Kiar. Uh, is in the, in, in the room, Greg, and his uh, former team in uh, Johns Hopkins University developed the BOSS, and uh, we're happy to be able to use these kinds of technologies. The last thing we want to do is to reinvent the wheel. And uh, so far, this is still in prototype, but it could be a lot of fun. Uh, 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 Armin? Where's Armin? 
Armin is, is uh, one of the uh, young coders in the, in the lab, and uh, Armin has been working with the LEAP technology. You can see the, the uh, device here. It's not very expensive, but this allows you, uh, you to, to uh, capture uh, hand motion and hand signals to define uh, particular in, uh, instructions to the software so that you can rotate or, or zoom simply by hand motion. So we're basically creating a minority report uh, interface to explore the big brain data set. I'm not sure ultimately what will be the scientific advance that comes from that, but it's a lot of fun and it, me it means that the donors are very happy. So to, to close, what are the, the potential applications of the big brain? There are many and varied, but the uh, automated 3D cytoarchitectural analysis is possible. Neuroanatomy teaching, it's a stereotaxic template, obviously downsampled and segmented. It's a gold standard for image processing algorithms. It's a master data space for combining information across major projects such as the Human Brain Project in Europe. And it's a prior for neural modeling. You'll hear examples in all of these areas in, in today's talks. Of course, I can't end without acknowledging all the people in my lab who, who do, do all the work that's being done here, particularly uh, Lindsay, who's staring out of you here. And I don't know where it's Claude is. Yeah. Well, stand up, Claude. I think everybody should uh, know that Claude spent years doing this. Thank you.